Hi, I'm Nader watching Photolaryngism. I wanted to continue the series we kicked off last week looking at deep dives within the Caden Live tool. I wanted to specifically look at the color workspace and see what kind of value add that brings within this tool. Let's get to it. Okay, so once again, I'm Nate. This is Photo Learningism. Thank you so much for joining back in for this. If this is your first time joining in, thank you so much for spending your time with me. I do a lot of work on this channel to surface the cheap or free art technologies so that you can know about them and be a part of a community of learners where we share experience and knowledge to grow within our craft, with grow within our art forms. So thank you so much for joining in. I kicked off last week a series, a mini series, on looking specifically at the Kden Live tool. Uh, go watch that card over there. Uh, if you haven't already seen that, we're gonna continue on with that process of doing deep dives into how this tool works and all the different valuable, powerful features this tool has, because there's so much to cover. So we're breaking it into smaller chunks. So for this particular one, we're looking at the color workspace. Uh, the workspace changes uh, options are up here, and there's a few different ones. We jumped through those last week again. Uh, color offers some very interesting prospects where you can work on skin tones, you can work on the color differences between scenes, and that's what we're going to look at here tonight. Now, I'll make a quick note here to say that if you're using Windows specifically, there is a problem with DirectX, which I believe is the default uh, profile assigned when you're working with these kind of renderings. So in, to make these work, otherwise they just load blank, what you have to do is go into Settings, OpenGL Backend, and flip it from DirectX, click on OpenGL. That will correct that problem. It will force you to close and reopen Caden Live. But then going forward, you actually see the mappings. You see the uh, the, the uh, vector scope and, and the pieces that you need to actually measure things. So that's important if you're using Windows. Beyond that, one of the first thing I'd suggest is if you want to work specifically on skin tones, uh, what you should do is mask out skin <laughs> as a starting point. And to do that, what I'd suggest is first hop over to the editing workspace the reason being is that it's just easier to find this, this effect and work on it. Head over to Effects, and we're going to look for the Rotoscoping Transform. I'm going to drag that on top of one of these clips here. And you can see how it gives some instructions to click points. I'm going to use the left mouse button to initially create points. And then the final point would be a right click. There we go. All right, and I can adjust these as I need to, but really all I'm looking to do here is just make sure that I'm getting skin. That's all I want here, all right? There, good enough. So now I'm gonna flip back over to color. And within this space, what you may have to flip on is the, it's kind of running off the screen there, but this, this option here, the draw IQ lines. And that gives you kind of a baseline of where it would project the average skin tone to be. And that's not a hard and fast rule. It's just kind of a guideline so you can kind of sort of figure things out um, along you know, normal benchmarks. And that line is, is right here. Um, you can already kind of see that we're, we're pretty good on par um, because it's heading in that direction within the, the scope of color. If you wanted to see better what this actually maps to, what you could do is change the background to YUV, which gives you the color wheel. Um, that does change the paint mode, and paint mode is actually what's graphing. Um, so just so you understand how this works. If I turn that back off, I can flip this that part over to YUV, and that shows kind of with the actual respective color for the mapping versus the background. So you get different metrics by doing that. If I flip the background to show the color wheel, it automatically changes this to black. Depends on what kind of which which end of that you want to see. All right, so I'm going to keep that as none and keep that to YUV. And you can see the color differences. I can give you an example. If we just look at the colorization options here, and I'm just going to do a color balance effect. I'm going to drag that in here. And we can start looking at the different color values to see what actually happens on the graph. 
as I start to manipulate this, you can actually see how the color spectrum on the on the vector scope is is changing. And that's kind of bridging away from where the baseline is. That may not be a bad thing. Kind of gauge that by what you see up here versus this baseline. This is just again a guideline. <laughs> All right, but you can use this to tune a little bit and to kind of tone that in and come to a place where you feel like you're happy with what it should look like. Again, that's going to depend somewhat on what you interpret the skin, the actual skin tone to be, and to a degree what your stylistic presentation is going to be. Maybe you are trying to add an, an effect after the fact that, that gives it a certain tint, a certain mood. Um, so again, those all affect where that uh, actual thing is, uh, skin tone is going to be. But that's that's a guide that you can use to measure and, and somewhat direct where that goes, all right? And that's, that's specific to skin tones. Now, the other end of this is if you wanted to compare two different scenes, all right? So I'm gonna get rid of my rotoscoping because I don't need that anymore. And we can see how these are different. You can already see how the mapping is different because now we're looking at the whole clip and that's why it was important to get just skin because we needed to send kind of focus in on that range of color. Now this is mapping out a lot more because there's a lot more in the frame. And there are subtle differences. You can see how the pattern changes a bit between the scenes. I'm wearing blue in one of them. I'm wearing charcoal in the other. And we can actually compare a little bit. You can even notice how there's some subtle differences in light. One was shot kind of during the day. One of them was shot during at night. And we could use the mapping and spread of color to try to tune up against what's there. Now again, we do have values here to work from that give us you know, what we actually need to adjust. Um, the red, the yellow, magenta, and the blue, and all of that, the cyan. So using that as a guide, you could again apply effect to the clip you wanted to adjust, make sure you're actually looking at that clip, and then make some adjustments within those ones. Now. Let's compare these two here. We know there's a difference a lot heading towards the MG, the red. So let's look at the red magenta and start to make some adjustments there. And we can start to tune and try to morph the color patterning a little bit uh, between those two. Now it looks a little different now because um, again, <laughs> I'm playing with different things. And and to be fair, like I said, I'm wearing a different shirt color, so it may not be an exact match, but you can try to look at this uh, to compare if it's supposed to be similar, like if it's the same costume, the same costume, you could use this to analyze where are the differences and where do I need to make corrections so that they do match, that regardless of what the light was that day and this day, and if it was two different days, cloudy and sunny, but you want them to look the same, you could do grading like this to make sure that that matches as closely as possible. You could do colorization like that. So this is a very powerful tool looking at the vector scope to measure, engage, and make those corrections. All right. It does have a histogram. However, there's a certain degree of unreliability to determining where that falls. You can use that if you would like to measure the different, again, color wavelengths within the histogram. Um, there's also some measurements up here whether you want to see it in pure white versus the RGB spread. Again, those are so subjective to what you're trying to do, so they're interesting to see. The most powerful tool out of all of this that I can suggest would be the vector scope because that's really where you're going to be doing your grading differences between scenes and uh, footage and skin tones and that kind of stuff. And there's some really powerful possibilities there. So go check that out. This is Kaden Live again. Just for reference, I mentioned at the last video, I'm still on the same version. But to keep us on pace, I'm still on 20.8.3, same as last time. And that's another nugget of knowledge digging deep into KDN Live, working on the color workspace. All right. So once again, I'm Nate. This is Photo Learningism. Thank you so much for spending this time with me and engaging in learning.
If this was helpful to you, please consider giving me a thumbs up so I know it resonated with you. Consider subscribing so you don't miss out on the rest of this series and the awesome stuff we're going to be covering in the future. And don't hesitate to leave a comment. It's wonderful when people leave comments and get a conversation started. And it's not just for me, it's for the whole community of learners so we can help each other and build each other up in our artistic knowledge. Thank you so much for joining in. I'll see you at the next video.